Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's crazy how, how reliable they are now. Yeah. It's like you know you pretty much do everything on them. It's more reliable than any other device. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And we carry one around with us 24-7, so it's yeah. as if like it's a part of our body already, yeah. so it seems like it's only one step before that actually happens. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I agree. Okay. Well, Luana, welcome back to Iblis Manifestations. Thank you. It's really a pleasure to have you on. You guys uh, absolutely fucking killed it out there. Oh, thank you, man. You know. I appreciate it. Oh, I mean, like, I've listened to you guys, of course, I've listened to you on the record pretty much since the inception of the band around, what, five years ago now, I think. And, uh, you know, I had some idea, I've seen live videos, you know, everyone always talks very well of you guys, and we, of course, have had the pleasure to speak before. Uh, this time, we're not going to talk about uh, toxoplasmosis, okay. just for uh, anyone who All listened right. to the last one. But when I was watching the show, uh, I even turned to my girlfriend, I was like... There's a fucking good energy here, you know, yeah. like it's like it's not just that you girls are good musicians, but there's a feel, you know, like you you really feel that energy in the room. And I thought that was quite powerful. I mean, how did you find it on stage tonight? I mean, we do care a lot about performance because it's like, it, you know, it's it's called the show, like we're putting a show. So it's part of it has to be the performance. Maybe sometimes not even like perfect in terms of like how you play it, but I think it's more important to have a performance and maybe not to be perfect in, in the way that you play uh, rather than being like just perfectly playing like in an album but just like being still on stage. At least for us, not criticizing anyone that does that, but for us we do like a lot to have a performance on stage and also it's the first show. So we still have energy because we just like, we just started. <laughs> maybe, maybe on day 20. I won't be so so hyped about oh uh, playing, but <laughs> we'll see on day twenty how it goes. But for now, we're pretty energetic still. Sure, that's good. It's interesting that you say that because obviously this is the first date of a fairly long tour that uh, you have yeah. you have ahead of you. So uh, first of all, best of luck with that. Not that you would need it, but. Um, don't you think that sometimes, you know, when you start playing the shows, um, it's interesting to me that you said that the first one is the most energetic one, but I always feel like the first one or two are good to kind of get rid of the ring rust. Oh, yeah. So then you kind of almost get more into it. And as you're, uh, of course, you know, as our bodies kind of fall apart, the more a tour actually goes along. I do feel like that energy that I was talking about maybe even transfers better on stage? I don't know, because it's like a vibe, it's not just the notes, it's a it's a feeling, you know? Uh, well, well, first show, is, as I said, because it's the first, we do have the energy to be more like, you know, hype on, on stage, but uh, at the same time, I do agree with what you said, that uh, I was pretty nervous before the show today, because it has been like, since we uh, traveled from Brazil to here, we even played in the Philippines before. So we've been traveling for like, I don't know, I don't know what day it is today, but just like for a week maybe of traveling and just one show in a week and no practice because we've been only like traveling around. So we, we, we were all pretty nervous before this show, like, oh my God, can we still play the show? I don't know, we haven't been doing that all much. It feels like we just have been traveling now. It's not a tour to, to play the show, so it feels like we're just traveling. Well, I think that that rock and roll feeling is kind of what it's about anyway, you know. Yeah, I mean, we try. Yeah. We try. I try. I, I am uh, for sure. Uh, from all the girls, uh, I think I am the one that gets the most comments from being um, from maybe maybe having more of a still face on stage, hmm. more apathetic. I try my best, but I think from all the four of us, I get the most comments. Like, oh, the drummer is like. Not so hyped. I am. I am very hyped. <laughs> I'm very hyped, but also focusing. <laughs> yeah, focus. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I could see the look of focus. You know, yeah. I mean, everything from the very opening song. You know, like the precision. You know, and you have lots of fills and stuff as well. You know, and then everything's gonna be on point. You never really know what the sound's gonna be like on stage either, especially at a festival. Yeah. So uh, yeah, focus. Yeah. Yes. And we got new gear as well, all okay. new gear, so we're all like, oh damn it, like first show of the tour, 
all new gear that we don't know how to use, like lots of cables that I never had to have to had to deal with before. And also like in a festival, which you have last time, so today was pretty nerve-wracking. But it went well. Mm. I would say it did. I think it went great. Oh, the, I mean, the response looked great. I mean, that I'm sure you saw that yourself. You know, people, yeah. uh, you know, four of you ladies going on stage and then there's all of a sudden just a wall of people going into complete meltdown and chaos. It's yeah. nice to see. I quite like a, it. Quite, quite many Brazilians. Brazilians? Yeah. Tonight? Yeah, more than we expected. Okay. Lots of people screaming in Portuguese in front of the city for some reason. <laughs> Is that a common thing that happens when you're doing European shows? No, uh, Brazilians are like a plague or something. Like everywhere you go, you will find Brazilians. <laughs> like you go to right. the middle of absolutely nowhere, you're going to find a Brazilian there. Okay. Yeah. I guess maybe it's a little bit like when, like you always see at behemoth shows, there's always Polish people there. Uh, maybe makes it's sense. a little bit like makes that. Sense, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure. And actually, you know what? I'm saying this as if it's totally alien, you know. I've experienced that, obviously, with myself coming from Iran, you know. Random times we get Iranian people show up. Sometimes they're not even metalheads. Yeah. They just show up, you know, and the guy still got this, like, checkered, you know, polo shirt on uh -huh. or whatever. Yeah. But then he's like, yeah, I just came from work, but I heard that you guys were doing this and I support the message, cool. so I came to show. Yeah. And I think that's kind of cool anyways, man. It's very cool. Yeah, we also get some Brazilians that are just there because, you know, Brazilians are around, so they're like, okay, let's go, cheer them up, talk about Brazil, and, I don't know, you yeah. know, connect over living in the same country and being far away from it. How do you cheer up Brazilian? I don't know, Brazilians are very energetic all the time. They just, like, one thing about Brazilian people, when you meet them up at shows and stuff, it's like you never saw them before, you don't know them, you just know that they are Brazilians and they immediately treat you like you're like some sort of an old friend or mm. someone that you already know. They are always very happy, uh, hugging, very touchy, very different vibes from I think most people from our country. Yeah, especially in Norwegians. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Quite a difference in here, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But that's nice. I think that's nice, you know, and uh, it's it must be rewarding to be recognized for what you do, not just by the metal scene as such, but even by your own fellow countrymen, you know, I yeah. guess that, that's like a degree closer even, maybe. I agree. Yeah. I think it's good, you know, and the, you know, again, just for everyone who's watching this, the energy was just flawless, you know, I mean, I am from a, from a school of thought of, you know, well, you know, Niflheim kind of just you know, raw energy and just like totally, you know, just, just sheer power, you know, that's what I like in a show, you know, or, or Morbid Angel, for example, you know, and, uh, and a lot of times when you're listening to bands, it sounds a certain way, you know, and uh, of course the live energy doesn't always get reproduced in the studio anyway, not saying that's the case with yourselves, but you know what I'm saying, you know, it's that when you watch something live, uh, it's not just what you're hearing, but you feel something. You feel this energy building up in you that makes you want to move. And uh, I was pleasantly surprised at how much of that I felt tonight. Cool. I hope that doesn't sound condescending in any way, yeah, but yeah. really, I was like, oh shit, fucking let's yeah, go. That's you great know? to hear, that's great yeah. to hear, really. That's what we want to... Um, maybe make people feel or uh, perceive about our show, so it's nice to hear from people that it's working somehow. Absolutely, yeah. The new stuff especially, I think, sounded pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah you know, had my mistakes, but uh, overall <laughs> I was satisfied. But I guess it's a little bit more kind of fresh for you as well, because you toured the other stuff so yeah. much, and oh, now yeah, you get to... the other stuff I'm like... Yeah. Fucking playing it any day, just wake me up and put me on stage for the, the, the old songs. But the new songs, the newer ones, we gotta focus a little bit more. And it's the first show, but it was good. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that one. I'm You've sick done, of it. done that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's a was, great song, it's cool. Oh, yeah, yeah, but the other day I was just thinking that in 10 years I'll be so done with that. Yeah. In five years I'll be so done with that. And how long have you been playing it for now? Four, five years? I don't even know when it got released. <laughs> when 
that at least. If I remember right, was it like 2020 or 2019 when your first stuff came out with crypto? 2021, I think. The okay. The first album, mm -hmm. maybe. So it has been only three years. Oh my god, that's concerning. <laughs> I'm already sick of it. <laughs> Love the song, but god damn it, playing it every night is like, oh jeez. <laughs> yeah. But I think the most viewed thing of you as a musician online is the drum footage of that song, you know, the drum play through that it you is, did in the it studio. Is. Yeah, yeah. yeah, like newer footage of me, it is that one. Yeah, even though you're probably, at least by your own standards, you probably think I'm way better now than I was oh, when I recorded that. Oh, absolutely. I yeah. do not watch that video and not most of my drum videos. It gives me the ache. <laughs> 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 Yeah, I sometimes think that as well because we released a video for our song Azrael and uh, that did okay, you know, viewing wise. We weren't expecting it at all. And I keep thinking to myself, I'm waiting for myself to go, ah, oh, shit, I should have done it differently. Yeah. I'm waiting to go, ah, we could have done it better. We could have done this or, ah, why did we do that? But so far, I mean, it came out in July. I'm still like, yeah, that's pretty cool. Nice. So, maybe maybe if that feeling stays, you know, you did it like just right. Yeah. I never got to that point yet. Every time I'm like, fuck, it gives me the ache to watch myself. Yeah. But, but it's still a great performance, you know, yeah. you're making a good showcase there. Yeah, at some point I'll like something that I make. Yeah. But yeah. I'm satisfied. Yeah. I'm only satisfied. <laughs> well, you're a lot better at the traditional blasts now. Yeah. So yeah. I think back then you were a lot more... I was learning, actually, yes. those. Uh, every album that I release with any bands that I play, I try to make a list of things that still make me uncomfortable to play. That I can play, of course, because I have to be able to play a little bit to, you know, insert in a new song or in, in a new album, but just to make me uncomfortable still. Mm. So I make sure that since I, I will have to record that, I'll have to record uh, to practice way more. Right. And then by the time that I record, I'll already be a way better drummer than I was when I started to write those songs. And by the time that I'm done playing tours with that album, I'll be like actually comfortable with things that I it, it were just completely out of my reach before. So you know, uh, when I wrote this last album, I certainly made a list of things that I'm working still. And for the next one, I already have the list for the other things that make me uncomfortable. So you know, getting a uh, Trying to make it a little bit better uh, in comparison to my past self, every album. Well, that's great, you know, because it's like, you know the saying, it's cliche, but they say that when you're not growing, you're dying. Yeah, yeah, you, you know, not, not even uh, comparing myself to anyone or like to other people's standards, just like comparing myself to myself mm. back then. So, you know, just yeah. growing a little bit, baby steps, you know, but it's making a huge difference over time for me. There's a Persian proverb that says Gatra Gatra Jam Gada Darya Oh my god. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so the translation to that is drop by drop gathers and becomes the sea. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. yeah I, agree. I think it's a good reflection of the way uh, consistency kind of pays off. Yeah. I mean, I think it's so valuable what you said about competing against yourself, not anyone else, not going on Instagram, watching everyone doing gravity blasts no, at like 400 work. BPM, you know, yeah. but rather actually, and I'm sure that's something you could do if, if you try it, no yeah. problem. Uh, you're a fantastic drummer. What I'm saying is that um, that competing against your own standards is very important. I mean, I had this just, you know, even with fitness. You know, being uh, 120 kilos heavy, mm -hmm. um, if I wanted to go online and look at the most top bodybuilders in the world, I would just give up. I would, yeah, I would that's cry. That's frustrating. It. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But instead, being like, well, this is what I was like yesterday. This is what I am today. How can I get better now? Yeah. So I actually think that's a really interesting approach to have with music, you yeah. know, and art, which is it's such a subjective thing. But then at the same time, it does require a lot of skill as well. I think it's an interesting sort of dichotomy between those. Yeah, a lot of people ask me in like drum interviews and stuff uh, what tip I would give to drummers. And I just see that new drummers nowadays are like so focused in watching other people play and like trying to emulate other people 
or trying to practice to reach to whatever they are seeing other people do. I think that's so unhealthy. Like you, you can, you can't admire someone and get inspired for sure. But if you're just trying to follow people around and like just watch other people, it's just gonna be so frustrating because it takes so long and it takes so much practice to even reach anywhere with like instruments, you know, and like yeah. music. If you're gonna be just watching great musicians from the beginning, it's gonna be very frustrating that it takes so many years to get to even like a okay level, you know. So yeah, yeah it's better to compare yourself to yourself, um, and then you're gonna eventually be as good as someone that you watch. But you know, that's a uh, uh, healthier thing. Absolutely. One thing uh, that's interesting with that as well, what you're saying about like looking at other people and seeing how they're doing and performing and just trying to be like them. I feel like there's maybe an even deeper thing to that, just with the psychology of human beings in general, you know. Since like social media, as you know, is always this thing of everyone seems perfect all the time, yeah. you know, which is bullshit. We know that's not it true. Is, absolutely. You know, and I think that a lot of times people see that and they always think, oh, this person is perfect or, or oh, look at, look at them, you know, this band is on tour all the time, playing, you know, all the glory and everything, you know, which, of course, you know, that, that there's, there is a lot of value to that, but uh, you don't see what goes behind it. Oh, hell no. Yeah. I'm on tour all the time and I wish people would see how I slip <laughs> in the van day by day, it's just so miserable. <laughs> Huh. Like it's nice to be on tour because you know you're promoting your band and doing your job and like you know it's my full time job being a musician nowadays like all yeah. the all the money to survive that I get I get from playing death metal which is awesome but also um, it requires a lot from all of us to live like this because it's not a not an easy job it's quite a tough one I would say to live on tour all the time you barely sleep you don't eat properly. You know, you spend all your time in the van, so like all the all the extra time that you have to like talk to your family or do extra things that are not related to music, that's all the time that you got, you know, in the van when you're traveling. So like, it's quite tough, but it's going well for us, so we keep doing it. But yeah, it's a, it's like you said, people people online maybe sometimes don't don't get the idea that it's not uh, not even. Some people say it's not as glamorous. I would say it's not. It's not at all. It's not. It's. <laughs> it's minus glamorous. It's minus, yeah. It's yeah. Min minus ten glamour. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, and it, it, there's a lot of sacrifices that goes into it as well. You know, I had the um, Selenos from Dimborgir on the show uh, back in December originally, and uh, he made a very good point. And this is one of them things that kind of stuck to me, you know, because I, I always listen to people and I try and take stuff uh, for myself as well, you know, whilst having these. And one thing that I really thought was important was that he said that when you want to have something of value, when you want to gain that, then the sacrifice that you make in order to get that also has to be of something of value. Mm -hmm. If you get rid of something that you don't care about, then there's no meaning to that. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I thought that was that was quite valuable. And of course, for me, I already related to it from the perspective of having to permanently just leave my home and country and shit just to do metal, which is the dumbest idea anyone's ever done, by the way. Uh, <laughs> but wouldn't change it. Um, but um, but yeah, there's there's a lot of sacrifice that goes into it, whether it's with your body, whether it's with your mind. You know, oh. like you said, if the food is not good, and I guess. Um, in personal life as well, you know, we always have to pay the price when, you, when you're doing something like no this. No personal life. <laughs> Barely see my family. Huh. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, it's, uh, I agree very much with that. And that was a very smart way to put it, very wise way to put it. Because music and death metal, death, 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 <laughs> hard to pronounce it. Metal are the most important things in my life and the ones that I care the most about. Like. Uh, Maybe my, my personal life isn't going well, or maybe I'm sick from whatever, or maybe I'm having an issue of whatever. It's n nothing is gonna hit me as hard as when I don't have a nice show. You know, like right. it doesn't matter what's happening in my life, what negative things are happening. If I don't play like a nice show, then I'm gonna be very, 
very depressed about it, and it's gonna hit me very hard, harder than anything else could ever come close to, like hit me, you know. So yeah, it, it, as he said, like we're putting a lot of effort, physical and mental, and uh, sacrificing personal life and everything to be able to do this because it is what I care the most about. So it is what I sacrificed the most for, for sure. Are you quite self-critical then? Oh, too much. That's yeah. a, a, to an unhealthy point. Yeah. My bandmates will, will say that. Yeah, very critical. Never, never liked anything I've, I have ever played. But uh, I get satisfied. Mm. I don't like every. Uh, our sound tech always says after the show that he never heard me being like, "Oh, that was a great show." It's always like, "How was it? It was okay. It was decent. I'm satisfied." Yeah. But uh, but it's just part of I, I guess trying to always improve. Every night I'll find something I'm like I, I can improve that. I can improve that. Oh, I didn't hit that snare, or uh, I hit, I hit that mic tonight, or something like. There, there's never gonna be a perfect show, but in my mind, I'm just like, okay, if I do it better tomorrow, someday we might have one perfect show. But it's just, you know, it's part of the trying to get better. Obviously. You know, that's really interesting. The way I try and look at it, you know, because it's like there's so much shit that can go wrong when you're playing a show. And it could be the tiniest of things, and sometimes it could be something that's not even you. It could be a different band member, you know, yeah. or like someone does something at a moment that you were anticipating. Uh -huh. that the song kicks in, and then someone else does something wrong, and then it's like, I know the feeling when that comes back and like haunts you. You know, where you're uh -huh. like sleeping there and you're all relaxed, and then boom, oh shit, I did that thing wrong uh -huh. at that moment, at that second. I totally understand. Um, but I, the way I kind of try and sort of make it a little more human uh -huh. for myself is just think of it as making memories. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. For you sure, know? For sure. <laughs> you know, our, I think our brains, at least my brain especially, tends to focus on the negative parts way more. So, like, if I had a 95% good show and I hit the mic, like, three times, I'll be like, oh, I'm just going to go to bed and be like... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, but then at the same time, um, it, like you said, it's a blessing and a curse because if you didn't have that, you also wouldn't be the drummer that you are today. I agree. So. I agree. I, I wouldn't be making lists to get better or being like, okay, I'm not comfortable playing that. So next album, I gotta, you know, <laughs> catch up with that thing. Uh, so I agree. Yeah. It's a double-edged sword, isn't it? It is. It is. It's a, an absolute curse uh, every night to play shows and only think the negatives of it. But also, it's it is what makes me go home and also, you know, go go to practice. You know, mm -hmm. it is what makes me uh, consistently practice because I'll be like, okay, yeah. you know, gotta do it every day. It doesn't matter if I feel good or not, if I'm tired or whatever. Gotta do it at least a little bit every day. Absolutely. Well, I. Totally respect. Uh, so, um, what's uh, what's kind of next for you guys now then? With uh, with everything that's going on, you know, you have a very busy. How, how long is it? A couple of months that you're on tour for? Uh, two months right now, and then after that, I think we're taking a small break at home again. Always the smallest breaks, and then we were. I don't know. I think we're gonna be on tour till December again. Every year is just like relentless touring, which is good. It's great. But also dying a little bit, but <laughs> but promoting the band really well. But yeah, for now, two months in Europe, and then I don't know. I think uh, Brazil maybe, or or straight in the U.S. I don't know, but something of that sort. Uh, sorry, just before we finish, I just you mentioned Brazil, and it reminded me. How are the gigs with Ghost? All very good, yeah. like incredibly good. Uh, the crowd was just gigantic, ginormous, crazy. Um, Ghost was, they were really nice, really, really nice people. We, we met them, uh, well, in the first day we didn't get to play. We were booked for uh, opening for two shows. But in the first day they, have, they had a major, major problem at the airport in mm. which all their stuff got like locked somewhere in some other country and they almost didn't get the gear 
we almost canceled it, it, it all, like Ghost and us, but they managed to like get there last minute and put the stuff on stage and just get in time so we couldn't play because they were on quite late, almost canceled their own show. But uh, but they 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 made up, uh, made up? No, I don't I don't know how to say that in English. It's just like. They hyped us up quite a lot <laughs> Yeah. because we couldn't play. And then in the second night when we did play, it was really, really good. Uh, also, people came back because some people wanted to see, you know, the combo and it was very cool. So yeah, it was a great experience. Because yeah, I think what happened on that first show was that you guys didn't get to play because their stuff got there so late. Yeah. Um, and I think a few people were actually quite mad that you weren't playing on that night. Ah, uh, there's always some people who yeah. am. But that's a good thing, right? I guess, I guess. At a show of that s scale and size, the fact that that was the case, I think it's a great compliment to what you guys yeah. are doing. I would never miss Ghost. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, alright, if some people didn't want to go, I guess it's okay. Yeah. They are great. I mean, I've seen them sort of like from just before the second album, all the way until now, and it's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, amazing show, one of the best yeah. live shows I have ever seen. Despite, uh, I, I know some people don't, don't like the music very much because it's not super heavy, I guess, so I don't know what's the problem. But uh, I like it a lot, and uh, despite liking or not liking, I think it's a show worth seeing despite, because it's just, it's incredible. Such great professionals and great people. Absolutely, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I met him in November, actually, uh, at the Watain anniversary show. It was really cool. You had like all of the best people in that building, you know, all yeah. at the same time. Um, and uh, you know, and I said to him, I said, for however many years, people complain that there'll never be another Metallica. There'll never be another Slayer, there'll never be an, another Iron Maiden, there'll never be another Led Zeppelin, there'll never be another this and that, you know, that we'll never have another new rock band that's gonna make it to that level. And I said, well, you fucking did it. Yeah, you know, is doing it. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I think people should, uh, I understand elitism, I am somewhat of an elitist oh, myself. Too. Yeah. Very badly, my dad hates it. <laughs> it's just, it's just who I am. Yeah. But I think ultimately we can all see the, the value in what they're doing and what they're bringing to the genre because a 13 year old person who might listen to them now, they'll trickle down the line and eventually they'll be listening to crypto. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly, exactly. And uh, I think people just like go into it thinking that it's going to be like the heaviest shit ever because of the costumes and the stuff and mm -hmm. it's not and they get like, I don't know, just complain about it but uh, that's not the mentality. But I think it's not supposed to be heavy, anyways. But I think that's what makes it interesting. You know, I know they got some heavy moments in like Mummy Dust and you know some of I those agree. songs. You know, it's not the point. Yeah, it's supposed to be like that. That's the catch. First time I saw it, I was just like, I can't believe they're they're like dressing like that and having those themes as lyrics and and then playing that music with those lyrics. It's just a, it's it's a, it's kind of a mindfuck, and that's what I like about it. Absolutely. Yeah, you know? Absolutely. Well, you hear it heard, ladies and gentlemen. Total ghost endorsement. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't planned, but here we are. Yeah. <laughs> well, Luana, thank you so much yeah. for uh, taking the time to come and do this with me here. I'm, I know you're probably tired, you know, but you're a warrior and, uh, and made for the road. So there we go. I wish you guys the absolute best for the upcoming tour. And uh, yeah, hopefully it's not too long until we bump into each other again. Yeah, I agree. Thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. Anything you'd like to share with the listeners? Uh, go watch Crypto because it's going to be a long tour and it would be nice if we had some people around watching us. I'm sure you're definitely going to have people around. Uh, hopefully. <laughs> Amazing. You heard it here, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you all for tuning in and we'll see you on the next episode of Eblis Manifestations. Cheers.